Hello, everyone. Today, we will take a look at Kingdom Plante. Right away, we can identify some characteristics of Kingdom Plante. This is um, a kingdom that contains complex, multicellular, autotrophic, eukaryotic organisms that are usually green and use photosynthesis in order to make food. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper to explore characteristics of plants and the evolution of plants. So as I just briefly um, mentioned, there are some characteristics that one must um, consider right away when we think about plants as organisms. These are multicellular organisms and they obviously contain cells. These are gonna be eukaryotic cells. So we're gonna be able to find the nucleus present as well as other uh, membrane bound organelles. Also, the plant has a cell wall. Now this is one feature that separates or distinguishes the plant cell from the animal cell in terms of eukaryotic cells. Um, plants are producers, which means that they're autotrophic. They're able to make their own foods through the process of photosynthesis. And so we'll look at this a little bit more here in just a moment. So these are some identifying characteristics of plants that you should be familiar with. So the origin of plants, this is a situation that is not completely known, but similarities between um, algae and plants suggest that they may have originated from um, ancient species of green algae. All right, so we'll keep that in mind as we explore these plants in the actual uh, evolution of plants. So to date, there are over 280,000 species of plants um, that inhabit the earth today. Most of these you're gonna find in terrestrial environments, such as deserts, grasslands, and forests, while there are some that inhabit uh, aquatic environments, right? And so as I mentioned before, early evidence suggests that plants, uh, land plants have evolved from some of the uh, ancient algae uh, that exist, all right? So we'll run with that as our understanding for the evolution of plants. So again, here we're looking at this, um, early green algae as our starting point for where our now uh, modern land plants have evolved. And then we have um, various types of uh, plants that we'll look at here today, those that are non-vascular plants. And then we have those that do have vascular systems. We have those first seeded plants. We'll take a look at, and we'll take, take a, a deeper dive at these um, flowering plants over here, our angiosperms, all right? So we'll walk through some of the uh, different classifications of plants as we have a knowledge of them, okay? So I mentioned photosynthesis earlier. This is a process in which plants um, take carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight in order to make um, sugar and oxygen as its products. Okay, this is a very uh, critical process that organisms rely on as plants are producers. They're at the bottom of the food chain in terms of being a source of food for primary consumers, secondary consumers, and so forth. And so you should be familiar with this process of photosynthesis in terms of what's happening and where in the cell does this take place, All right? So our reactants here were clear for um, photosynthesis is that, of course, the plant requires carbon dioxide and water and sunlight energy, right? This sunlight energy will be converted to chemical energy um, during the process of photosynthesis in that first uh, light-dependent reaction. And we have our outputs as um, carbohydrates, such as glucose and oxygen, okay? And these products that are generated here during photosynthesis become a very essential component in cellular respiration, which is the process by which um, organisms, animals get uh, energy, okay? So So what happens during photosynthesis? Where does this process take place, All right? Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast of the plant cell, okay? This uh, reaction is characterized by the use of sunlight energy in order to ultimately 
um, produce sugars and release oxygen into the environment. And so the way that this process works is that the sunlight energy is um, harnessed or captured, if you will, by the uh, chlorophyll pigment, okay? This chlorophyll is the green pigment that's found within the chloroplast, okay? And this, again, the chloroplast is the intracellular location where photosynthesis takes place. And as you saw in a previous chapter, um, this chloroplast has some internal compartments or structures that are, are important in this photosynthesis conversation. Uh, the thylakoid is where, you know, the stage one of photosynthesis takes place, our light dependent reaction. And then we have the um, stroma where the Calvin cycle or uh, stage two of photosynthesis takes place. And so if you've forgotten how that happens, I do encourage you to go out and review um, how photosynthesis actually takes place. It takes place over two um, steps. So we have a light dependent reaction and we have a light independent or some would say a uh, dark reaction, also known as Calvin cycle. So anyway, um, photosynthesis is important because this is how plants make their food and get energy from the sun, all right? And as I said before, the products that are generated from photosynthesis are then uh, critical for um, cellular respiration, okay? Uh, this process of cellular respiration, again, is how we take the um, glucose as a preferred carbon source and oxygen and um, break it down in order to release uh, carbon dioxide uh, water and ATP into the cell. So we've looked at the process by which we're able to um, convert these um, energy that's trapped in those glucose molecules into um, a release of ATP into the cell through the process of cellular respiration. There's three stages, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. These are all taking place within uh, the eukaryotic cell where we've got the uh, glycolysis taking place out here in the cytoplasm. And we've got the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain taking place over here in the mitochondrion with the uh, electron transport chain being the most um, productive stage in cellular respiration for uh, the conversion of um, ATP. So this here is just a general schematic of what the plant cell looks like overall, the anatomy of the plant cell, okay? This is a typical eukaryotic cell. So you're gonna see your you know, mitochondria, your endoplasmic reticulum, obviously the presence of ribosomes, your Golgi, that plasma membrane. All right, but one feature here that again is unique to the plant cell is the presence of the cell wall, okay? Plant cells also have the chloroplast. All right, this chloroplast is our site or location of photosynthesis, right? There's also some other structures like the plasmodesmata that are uh, quite unique for the plant cell and this uh, large central vacuole, okay? So do make a note of that. These are structures that you already learned about in terms of their um, uniqueness to uh, the plant cell, okay? So the presence of the cell wall, this plasmodesmata, this central vacuole, and, and certainly uh, this chloroplast. So how do plants reproduce? They have the capability of reproducing both asexually and sexually, okay? Asexual reproduction we know is gonna be characterized by the presence or requirement for only one parent, right? And all of the offsprings that are generated through uh, asexual reproduction will basically be a clone. They will be identical to uh, that parent organism, okay? Um, in sexual reproduction, we know that there are two parents required and the offsprings are basically going to be a hybrid, right? They're going to inherit traits from both parents, right? And so in the case of plants, we rely on pollen, right, to carry the sperm in sexual reproduction. And so we see these bees over here as very important um, role players in um, pollination. I think we sometimes underscore the roles that different animals and organisms and insects play in maintaining the ecosystem, but pollinators are quite uh, important here uh, because some plants do reproduce through uh, sexual reproduction.
And so if we were define if we were to define sexual reproduction again, uh, we understand that plants carry out sexual reproduction, which is basically going to be the meeting of these male and female um, sex cells, right? Our gametes. So mosses and ferns, for example, are going to rely on al alternative methods um, for this meeting to take place, whereas other types of plants um, rely on um, these pollinators to physically uh, facilitate this process, right? Um, seed producing plants rely on wind and insects, right? To carry the male gametes to the female uh, reproductive parts. Um, after fertilization, the zygote develops in that seed, and this is where it can remain for a long period of time. And so we'll talk about the seed in just a few more moments, but that's where we're going to find that plant embryo um, located in the seed, okay? And so when we talk about the structure or organization of the plant, we talk about it in terms of systems, okay? So you've probably heard the term roots and shoot systems, okay? So plants have roots, right? We know the major role of these roots is for the plant to be able to uptake water, right? Um, and we talked about this phenomenon with um, water properties and being able to, uh, this capillary action, that's manifested in these roots, bringing in water and nutrients to the plant. So we got a root system and then we've got what we call a shoot system, right? The shoot system cons uh, consists of the stems and leaves, right? And this is where um, materials are made, uh, materials moving up and down through these plants and getting out to the leaves and, and so forth, right? And so we'll talk a little bit more about the analogy with this roots and shoot system being analogous to um, an organ system, if you will, here later in this discussion. So the three main parts of the plant that makes up this roots and shoots system, we'll start with the roots, okay? Roots are gonna be the components of the plant that penetrate the soil and sort of anchors the plant into the ground, right? The roots are responsible for absorbing minerals and water from the soil that will be used in the process of photosynthesis. So these roots are quite essential for uh, the plant, okay? If you think about the structure of the plant in terms of the leaves and so forth, we don't put the water, water doesn't penetrate the leaves of the plant. And we'll see here later in our discussion um, that these leaves of the plants contain a, a cuticle this wax covering, if you will, um, which is going to prevent the actual uh, uptake of water in that in that capacity. And so these roots are going to be important. These roots and stems are going to be important for um, water and nutrients being able to travel up to the leaves of these plants, okay? And so we're still looking here at the main part. So we've got the roots and we've also got leaves, right? Leaves are going to provide a large surface area for the absorption of sunlight. And so this is where we'll start to uh, understand where our chloroplasts are uh, located in the plant out in these leaves. All right. Um, photosynthesis occurs inside the chloroplast of the cells of the leaves, right? So this is where the absorption of that sunlight is taking place in these beautiful leaves in the middle of these leaves. So we've got roots, we've got leaves, and then we've got stems, all right? Stems are composed of rigid tissue that raise and support these leaves, right? So you should certainly be familiar with the three main parts of the plant, all right? We'll talk about some additional structures here in just a moment, but right now we're understanding that the roots, leaves, and stems are the three major components of the plant structure. Okay, stems also transport substances from roots to leaves and from leaves to roots. Okay, so there's a, a lot of transport happening here um, by way of the stems of the plant. So plants can be classified uh, based on based on Plants are divided into four main groups based on two uh, major characteristics, right? So the presence or absence of this vascular tissue and the presence or, presence or absence of seeds, 
right? So are these plants vascular or non-vascular? And are they seed bearing or non-seed bearing, right? And so as we mentioned before, these vascular tissue are gonna be important in terms of transport, right? Transporting substances um, such as water, minerals, sugar, so forth throughout the plant, okay? Um, seeds are obviously the structures again, that we mentioned earlier are gonna contain that embryo, right? They can also store food and they're typically surrounded by this uh, protective coat, okay? And so we take this uh, as our basis for uh, grouping plants, okay? On whether or not they are uh, vascular or non-vascular and then are they seeded or non-seeded, okay? Let's take a further look at this. All right, so there are some divisions in this uh, kingdom plantae eh? here. Again, we can classify plants as either being non-vascular plants. So those are going to be our bryophytes and so forth. We'll see our mosses and um, vascular plants. We have seedless plants and plants with seeds. And then we have those where our seeds are co uh, uh, non-coated or naked or in those that are uh, coded or enclosed, all right? So we'll take a look at each of those. So you should certainly take some time um, outside of this uh, lecture here to uh, understand the various classifications of our um, plant divisions, okay? Vascular versus non-vascular, seeded versus seedless, naked seeds versus enclosed seeds. And so we'll explore that a little bit more here. So our non-vascular plants, these are going to be plants that do not contain any conducting tissues and are often referred to as bryophytes, okay? So these plants are going to be typically small. They're going to grow very close to the ground. They're going to include mosses and liverworts, for example, okay? So these are non-vascular tissues, non-vascular plants, okay? So what we see with these uh, non vascular plants is that they don't have any pipes or mechanisms to transport water and nutrients, all right? Again, this is why they are growing typically very short, close to the ground. They depend on other mechanisms of transport, such as osmosis and diffusions in order, in order to um, move materials from one part of the plant to the next, okay? And so again, some examples of these um, types of plants are uh, mosses and liverworts, okay? I do encourage you to go out and further explore uh, this information as you uh, need to do so, okay? And so then we also have our vascular plants, all right? Vascular plants are gonna be those that have tissues that deliver needed materials throughout the plant, okay? Much, much as pipes deliver water to faucets, you can think about these vascular plants as having these mechanisms in place as well. And so then we have... Um, we can further classify va vascular plants as those that produce seeds and those that do not pre uh, produce seeds, right? So our ferns, horsetails, and mosses, and vascular plants. So seedless vascular plants contain vascular tissue but don't produce seeds, all right? So these are our pteridophytes, all right? This group is gonna include those horsetails, ferns, and club mosses. You've probably all at least seen mosses before as a pretty common uh, seedless uh, vascular plant, okay? Um, plants that do produce seeds, we've got two groups here that we want you to be familiar with. Those that are our gymnosperms, which are non-flowering plants. And then we have our angiosperms, which are flowering plants. All right, so we're still distinguishing now between our vascular plants. We have those that are flowering and those that, are, sorry, those that are non-flowering, the gymnosperms, and then the flowering plants are the uh, angiosperms. So seed-producing vascular plants also contain other um, extensive vascular tissue. And the majority of these species um, in the plant kingdom are in this group are seeded uh, vascular plants. They have a seed that contains the um, plant embryo, a nutrient supply, and that protective coat around it that we mentioned earlier, okay? And so again, we're saying that majority of the plants are going to be um, 
seeded vascular plants, okay? So we want you to understand the structure of the vascular plant that contains uh, the seed and the seed can be uh, coated, right? So seeded vascular plants are divided again into our angiosperms and the gymnosperms with our gymnosperms being those non-flowering vascular plants. These were our early, early, early plants. Okay, our early seeded plants. So gymnosperms. These are non-flowering plants with seeds that do not develop within um, an enclosed structure. So we've got our seeds, but they're not uh, enclosed within that coat, okay? These are the first uh, seeded plants, all right? These seeds contain the plant embryo. Let's keep that in mind here, okay? And then we have our angiosperms, which are flowering plants with seeds that do develop inside of that protective structure, all right? So we've got all types of flowering plants here, maple leaves, maple uh, leaves, rice plants, and so forth, water lilies. These are all examples of our angiosperms, right? And so again, this, um, this organization here shows you the various groups and classifications of living plants based on the presence or absence of vascular tissues, okay? The presence or absence of seeds, and whether or not these um, seeded plants are flowering or non-flowering, okay? You should be able to um, identify these characteristics of plants and group them um, accordingly or understand the designations for these uh, groupings, okay? So I mentioned earlier the three main parts of the plant being the roots, the stem, and the leaves, but there are some additional structures that you should be familiar with, um, which are the rhizoids, the xylem, the phloem, the cuticle, and the stomata, okay? These are all st uh, structures or components of the plant that have some very important parts here. Let's take a look at some of these. So these rhizoids. Rhizoids are going to be small hair-like structures that are going to also help to transport uh, materials and anchor the plant similar to the roots okay those are rhizoids and then we have the xylem and the phloem okay these xylem are going to be hollow tubes made of dead cells that transport water from the uh, roots of the plant out to the leaves all right and then the phloem are hollow tubes made of cells that transport glucose made during photosynthesis from the leaves of the plant to the rest of the plant, right? So the xylem and the phloem have very specific functions that you should be um, familiar with. And then we have this cuticle, right? And this is the last component here that I think you should be familiar with. Um, the cuticle is basically this wax covering that uh, is a wax covering on the stems and leaves of the plant, okay? This cuticle prevents water loss in plants. It helps to retain the water that's being transported up to um, the leaves of the plant. All right, and then the stomata, okay? We've got the stomata here as little openings or pores that are present in the leaves of the plant, okay? The stoma are the pores through which there's a gas exchange happening uh, in plants. Um, some water is also lost through the stoma um, in a process known as transpiration. So we'll stop right here and look at this analogy that I mentioned earlier with the um, plant being a part of an organ system, right? So plant life begins with the cell. We're clear about that. This is a typical plant cell here. Again, we see all of these structures like the uh, central vacuole, the mitochondria. We've got lysosomes. We've definitely got that cell wall. We've got this inner cell membrane, nucleus, and so forth, right? So that's our cell, right? And then we have, we understand that a group of cells working together 
um, makes um, tissue, all right? So plants do have tissue, all right? And then we have where a combination of two or more plants or tissues working together uh, make an organ, all right? And so that's where we have our leaf, all right? And then a group of organs working together make an organ system. So we can see here how this plant as a whole can be analogous to an organ system, right? Where we've got various tissues, um, leaves, we've got roots. These are all a part of this organ system. And then we know that the organ systems all work together to create something that can live on its own and that's an organism, all right? So let's stop here. There are some review questions here. Oh, one other thing is that we need to consider the role of plants in the ecosystem, right? Plants are producers. They are super, super important when we think about sustaining life, right? They are the first biotic factors in all land-based food chains, okay? So they are producers. These producers will be consumed by our primary consumers, secondary consumers, and so forth. So they are absolutely essential in the ecosystem. You must certainly um, be able to appreciate and understand the role of plants in the ecosystem, all right? All right, so there are a set of review questions that you can work on here um, throughout the end of this presentation in your notebook.